The beauty of Summer League is it, it, it doesn't really matter, but it does for betting because other people think it matters. So, you know, looking at it and just sort of being like, okay, they're playing a glorified pickup game. This is fun. But when the odds shift dramatically because Chet Holmgren had one good game, well, that means something for betters who are who are playing their own game. And Holmgren did jump to the top after his big debut. Last night, though, we had Jay Nivey in action. We had the head-to-head matchup between uh, Paulo and Jabari. Not a lot of odd shifts, which actually surprised me because Jay Nivey was very impressive. And I thought with his sort of show-stopping ability, we'd see his odds go up a little bit, but they didn't. But he's a guy that I think is very interesting in this race because he plays the type of game that's great for highlights, which is so important in the NBA nowadays, as much as maybe the voters love to look at advanced stats. Something about those flashy highlights, you just, you can't get out of your mind when a guy's doing it every other night. Look at John Morant last year. And that's not to say he isn't just good in general, but Jay Nivey has that type of game. He's going to be on a team that's projected to be in that play in discussion. If not, outright playoff discussion, which I think helps the cause. We saw that last year where rookie of the year used to just be more about, okay, who's, which rookie scored the most or kind of had the best point rebound numbers last year with Scotty Barnes and Evan Mobley, both taking their teams to the playoffs. It, I, I don't think it's, it's all about making the playoffs or anything like that, but I do think there's a little bit of a narrative shift where voters are going to want to see guys on at least better teams not the bottom dwellers 